and welcome to um, World of Essentials with Melissa Nielsen. And I have Kelly here with me today. We thought we would talk um, about something that's near and dear to both of us. We're kind of veteran moms. We've been at this a while. She's got eight. 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 I have five. And we've been, at, we've been doing this for a long time. We have grown children and little children. And, um, and we've sort of been in that place of... Because, like, the biggest, I, I would say the biggest thing that I, I get that I worries me about people is they're so frantic. And so we sort of, we get it, and we know how to slow you down. You've got to slow down. And, and so we just wanted to talk about slowing down. Yes, because the chaos in you creates the chaos in them. It does. It does, and, it's, and it, it's, it doesn't stop. I mean, you, you, it's not going to stop doing this until you make it stop. And so you have to get yourself to a really centered place and that can be hard um, but you need to do it before something bad happens you had a health scare I last year had a health scare year um, before it was gosh it's been a while it's it been a like, while now like 18 months ago maybe yeah it was right after mine it was like a few months after mine it seems yeah like. it's been about a year and a half now yeah and mine's been almost three years so so um as yeah. a mom we put everybody before us mm-hmm. and we forget that self-care is what feeds us so we can fill everybody else's bucket. I had forgot about that and was in some situations that were very chaotic and very traumatic for everybody and trying to hold the space for everybody else except myself and ended up um, actually collapsing and having to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance, which was a huge wake-up call. It is a huge wake-up call. And I think, and you say, because it's almost like a reminder, because, yeah, we know it. We know, but then we go and we can get into management mode really easy. And I think it's super, it's super easy to get in management mode and then forget, wait a minute, I need to slow down. So when you live in management mode, um, and what's funny is I sort of wrote the pieces about management mom before I was in that place. So I, I know better. You know better. We know better. We definitely know that that's not where we should be and that that's not where we thrive and that's not how our family thrives. But sometimes you're just in that. You get you get put in that place, um, either by choices you've made or choices other people have made that make you then make choices to be the management mom, right. you know. And so then it's up to you to to be the one to go. Okay, I have to stop. And it starts with boundaries. Yeah, it totally There's starts with boundaries. Boundaries for everybody in your life. You you have to make those hard line boundaries. And I tell all the moms I talk to. You have to instill these boundaries. Everybody will walk all over Mm -hmm. you. They will push you. Learn to say no, and that no has to be a complete sentence. Uh, Oh, absolutely. No is a complete sentence. Whether you're talking about your children, or you're talking about your neighbor, or (laughs) somebody at church, or, you know, a friend in a baby-wearing group, or whatever it is, no means no, and it's it's okay. You know, I think even though we're empowered women, you know, we have all these women that are doing all these things to show their empowerment – they still forget to say no. And and when you don't say no and you don't lay that boundary, it really, saying nothing is really just a yes to somebody. That's all they hear. Right. When you don't say no, they're, they're just saying, oh, well, it's all right. Melissa's not going to mind. And boundaries are good for everybody, especially they are. for children. Children they need to see us do it, huh? boundaries. And I think when we hear that word attachment parent, we talked about this earlier. Yeah, attachment we did. Attachment parent doesn't mean that you're a doormat. No. Attachment parent is just you approach things in a more loving and calm manner, but you can't do that if you don't have those strong boundaries and hold those children in those right. boundaries. Absolutely, and I think that I think that if um, I can impart anything about being an attached mom from this end of it, you know, because we've been attached moms for a lot of years, and and like when I sort of came to it many years ago, it was like the laundry list, like oh we club diaper, oh we yes. we eat differently, you know, we co sleep and. That's not really, I mean, yeah, that's part of it. And the tenets of attachment parenting sort of talk about, you know, respecting your child. But that's not really the core of attached parenting is you have to be in a good place so they can be in a good place. Right. Because as we know, they feed off those emotions. Mm -hmm. And people can say, oh, well, you know, my my child didn't know. They absolutely know. Yeah, they They, totally know. You hide nothing. They get it. They get it. If you are fighting behind doors with your partner, they know. If you don't think that you're giving that to your kids, or you think you're giving your kids, um, see, look at this is how we fight it. You just don't fight anything. You you when you fight, you're putting up all this resistance. You you don't ever get anything solved with a fight. You have to come at it from a peaceful place, and and it's 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 a journey to get to that. I got to be in a peaceful place. It's an absolute journey, and it doesn't. 
like any journey, it takes time. That's what a journey is. It's mm -hmm. it's a series of, of time and, and things. And and you know, a lot of people are like, well, I want to be where you are, but I didn't get here. Right. You didn't get here day. when I... <laughs> you know, and I didn't, and I, you know, I have eight children. I have, my oldest one is 27. I've been a mom a very long time, and I've been many different kinds of moms. <laughs> and so I had to go through those journeys to get to where I am. And, you know, we have a, a saying in our house is peace begins with me because I can't tell anybody else to be peaceful if I'm not peaceful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. And I think that that's, um, that that's something that, um, that it is really important for you to understand that if you can't, if you can't hold your own peace, you're not going to be able to hold it for other people. And when we talk about holding the space and sort of, you know, being in that space of, of not having chaos, it all starts with you. So, you know, kids, I'm a firm believer that kids get up in, in the morning and sometimes they have great days and sometimes they have horrible days, but generally they have the same days. It's us and what we bring to it that colors how that day goes. So if you've had, you know, you could have the same tantruming child with special needs or not special needs, just a, a energetic child, because I've had some that have no special needs and they're just super energetic. Um, so you could have that and you could be in a really good place and you can have a great day with that child. Or you could be in a bad place and the child could do exactly the same things and it's how you're reacting to it that, that changes how, how the whole thing goes. And moms need to understand that you can change things at any moment of the day. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. There's a lot of, you know, it's, it's noon and, and my day's shot. Your day is not shot. In our house, I will pull everybody together and we will sit and we will, yeah. you know, do something quiet and meditative meditative mm -hmm. or you know play yoga garden game or we, yeah. will, we will do something quiet and they my kids know and they know the saying we are going to reset our day because you can always reset your yeah. day i've done it at 9 a.m yeah oh so the first I. five minutes have been I'm horrible like, crap there it goes and it is okay to stop what you are doing pull everybody yeah. in and and acknowledge it and say we are not in a good place mm -hmm. mommy is not in a good place i've had you know I had something go on this morning that I'm dealing with, so let's reset our day yep. and start over. It's never too late to salvage that. I agree with that, because even if you're start over, like often mine is, all right, well, we're gonna come together and then we're going to get in the car. Or we're, because you've got to get out of the energy of the space to, right. and and that can be harder in the winter, because I had a lot of winters. So we did things like, like you said, yoga garden game, get out, just, just, just the act of getting a picture book out and reading a picture book. And even to your big kids, just break the, you're breaking that tension and, and breaking that off to sort of restart. And, and it's so much, so much of it comes from like being in this frantic place and, and the need to slow down, you know, this like, um, and I sort of laugh, we moved to like paradise, like really paradise, even though it's pouring down the rain here and people are rushing all around and I go, where are you going? It's all right here. You know, like. And, 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 and so we have definitely trained ourselves since we moved to really be, since we moved three years ago, to really be like not part of that crazy hustle, bustle that everybody seems to be going somewhere. And, um, and you really have to, you really have to just stop yourself and go, I'm not in a hurry. Um, and, and, and if you are finding yourself in a hurry a lot, then you need to look at your rhythm and say, why am I late to everything? Why do I, why do I? believe that I need to be in a hurry all the time. So you got to go, well, if I'm thinking it's going to take 10 minutes and it really takes 35 minutes and I have to step back and go, well, 35 minutes ago is when I should have started getting ready to go to this thing, you know? And keep, when you're working on your rhythm, and please remember it's a rhythm, it's not a schedule. Right. I see moms making these schedules and it's like, oh, well, we're going to have dinner at 6. Your children are not going to starve to death if you eat at 6.15, 6.30. No, they're not. You know, so my kids have ate at 8.30. Yeah. And, and they're still alive. I think they ate late. <laughs> we had a lot of kids here today. <laughs> well, how did it get to be 9 o'clock? That's not good. And so that almost know, never happens. And you have a list of these are the things we will, you know, want to accomplish yeah. today. But when you first start off, you need to journal every day. This is what we did. Yeah. And this is... And, and this is what worked and this is what didn't. So at the end of the week, you can sit down and go mm -hmm. over it and say, okay, so this didn't work for us, obviously, all five days or the majority of the days. So I can pull this in. Right. You don't have to scrap the whole schedule. Don't just be like, well, I tried and I give up. It's just not going to work right. because Absolutely. I'm this way. My husband, you know, is this way. My kids are this way. Um, I have a husband that's never home. My husband works yeah, a full-time job mm -hmm. and we own our own business. He's literally gone from nine in the morning till sometimes two in the morning. And what's awesome though is you would never know that from like 
your Facebook, the way you guys communicate with each other, because we are you're together, you're on the same page. And just because he is not in my physical space... Doesn't mean he's not he here. He's very and, engaged in yeah. our life. He's very aware of what's going on with the children. We check in throughout the day, multiple times throughout mm -hmm. the day, to know what's going on. Um, you know, and he... And we have a calendar on our phones. And so if there's something important he needs to be at for the kids, I put, and I put, you know, Adam needs to be, you know, Yes, be absolutely. German. So he knows. We do knows, the same thing with everything synced to one calendar. Yeah. We have one calendar and he knows mm -hmm. when he says he has to be there and he will be there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I have special needs kids. Yeah. I have yes. some hardcore kids. She does. She makes so, mine look like. So I've been in the trenches and I know you moms that are struggling. It, it's rough and you feel like nobody gets it and nobody understands and well, this is my kid and. And, you know, and I have these, you know, personality traits and this and that. I promise you, if you work hard enough, you can overcome it. But Absolutely. you need to be in that place and be like, okay. You got to be willing. This, and then say, this sucks. Yep. This sucks and it's not working. And that's where I had to be and look at, this is awful and this sucks for all of us. And I am not being the best mom I can be and I am not giving them everything that they need. And we're all struggling. So what can we do to fix that? Yep. And I think that that's when you can be, because that's called being pliable. Well, it, that's exactly what we're asking of our children is to be pliable. And we, so we, we want to be in that place where, where we're, we're moldable, we're pliable, where we go, you know, this part didn't work, but we can mold it over here to bring this, this in and let that go. And it's just, it's just like sculpting. It's just like, it's, that's really what you're doing. And I think, I think too, there is this, this, this complete phallus, falsehood that, once you figure out the rhythm that it's always going to work and and really the, the what makes you a centered mom and a mom that that really understands rhythm and holding the space is that you can see things coming and you go oh grandma's going to be here in three weeks i need to be thinking about that now i need to be thinking about how that's going to affect karate um, our eating out, our groceries, and you plan for it. So then you have to make these like subtle changes to your rhythm. Or, or maybe, you know, daylight savings. How many people plan for daylight savings? I do. I plan for like a month in advance and I go, okay, it's coming. It's coming, so I gotta adjust bedtimes. And when you plan for it, then it doesn't hit you in the face. We plan for mood, mood changes. Yes! Some, because some house. kids are really uh, like affected by that. I have kids that are affected from it behaviorally. Um, mm -hmm. I have a daughter with epilepsy that is affected by it. So I make sure that I track that and I keep, keep track of it. It's all just one step ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and little by little. It Absolutely. doesn't. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It is not. It's all trial and error. You just need to get to a place where you acknowledge these things and say, yeah. okay, this is not working and it's okay to change it. Absolutely. And, and understand mm -hmm. that. And I've been this mom, so I can say it. The one sitting on the couch, totally checked out on Facebook. Kids are just tearing up the house, and you're like, you know, I, I tried. And, yeah. And, and you think, oh, I could take you to the park, but I don't want to go I don't want to go. I don't want to go I hear that one a lot. Safe. You need to I check know they back need that, in. but I don't want it. Yeah, but you don't want it. You need to check back into your own mm -hmm. life. Yeah, you do. And you're not going to do it on your phone. You're not going to do it in front of your computer. So you definitely have to sort of decide... You have to decide that that's what you want, you know, because if you want, if you want to be checked out mom, absolutely you can do that. And, and it, but it's different than being the mom that, that's probably watching this video or that at least aspires to be. But in what you're looking at online, because I've been this person when I started working with Melissa a very long time ago, <laughs> I was, you know, well, so-and-so's blog and this, and she's like, oh, Kelly, stop. Oh yeah. Stop because I worked blog. with a lot of those moms that had these really pretty goes, blogs. You know, a client, and I was like. My mind can understand that that person could possibly need anybody's help because, you know, their bread was beautiful and their home right. was, their you know, very was amazing. And it was, you know, it was beautiful and great and, and it's so funny and, and you only see a snapshot of their life right. and those of you that are right. friends with me on Facebook, you know, I'm in a different place and if you were friends with me two years ago because I had somebody the other day and they're like, I love your post, you're always so positive and I was like, <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Like, we must be new friends because I wasn't in that place. No, you weren't. You were I've so, been the checked out mom of my life is horrible and, yeah. and why did this happen to me and why have all these And I think we go through cycles and it, you know, because I think that we can be the on it mom and then something happens and we have to figure out then, okay, well, it doesn't mean that everything's going to hell in a handbasket. It just means that we're in the spot and we've got this roadblock. And, and the only way to go is up and over, you and know? I, I, and sometimes we're trying to figure out how to get around it and push it out of the yeah. way, but we got to go up and over it. Up and, and over it. And, and, and that takes 
takes us like being ready to do that. Well, and I've told moms that I work with and they said, you know, what do I do? And I said, I know that this happened, you know, for a child's diagnosis, a right. death in the family, some kind of a divorce, some kind of event. And I say, throw yourself a big old pity party. Yeah. Get all the ice cream, chocolate, whatever feeds your, you know, your inner food soul, go for it. And then start working. Yeah, absolutely. Because I do think we do need to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge that this is just suck fast. It's bad. It's but bad. a very short time. I tell yes, people, it cannot last days. You can and go days to Sad days. Town. You cannot unpack mm -hmm. and live in Sad Town. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, you you have to get out of it. A very like mm -hmm. tonight, I'm going to turn on a DVD for the kids, and I'm going to take this Ben and Jerry's, and I'm yep. going to shut my door, and I'm going to watch whatever garbage I watch, and eat ice cream and cry, and then tomorrow I'm going to get up, and I'm going to what can I do? We're going to figure it out. Yes, absolutely, and that's where you get to a place where. Um, you know, because I, I really want to attract people that are really ready to work. So when you are ready to work, and then you go, okay, now I'm ready to work, Melissa. Because the, the thing that's really hard um, is, is, the, is the moms that are like, well, I have an excuse for that one, and that's not going to work for me, and that's not going to work for me. So if you've had like a back and forth with me or somebody on Facebook who's given you 14 things to try and you're like but that's not gonna work for me and I will tell you then that means that you have a problem for every solution yes absolutely absolutely and and somebody introduced me to this concept um, it was a friend of mine and and at first I was like what it's called an ask hole <laughs> yes. and it's a real thing it is a thing it's a real thing and you all know them yeah you do and we you have know. them in all facets of our lives and it doesn't even have to do with Waldorf sometimes it might be your neighbor that asks you 14 different ways to shovel the walk or, um, you know, somebody who, everybody has them. And so I think that, that it's really important to make sure you're not the one that's, that's the asshole. You go, oh, wait a minute. The last three things they asked me, I gave them an excuse for. So maybe I think about why I'm giving all these excuses. So why that won't work for me. Why it won't work for you to do X, Y, and Z. Or, or your course is great but it won't work for me. So you, you figure it out. It'll, it'll all work out, I, I, it, but you gotta slow down. I mean, slowing down I think is the biggest one. Big, slow down. I, I think one of the things that, that, and she's seeing it now too since she's working with me, is when I will give instructions that I will ask like 14 different people to read, are these clear? And I'll still get 600 emails about the instructions and it, Oh, it said that? Yes, it said that. Did you read it? Oh, I must have missed that. Really, it was the first line. Um, so so you got to slow down. If you are in situations uh, on a regular basis where you feel silly because you missed it, then you're not, you're, you're not taking the time. So, And if you are struggling with your lessons because something seems to be missing, slow down. Slow down. Go back. Read what we wrote. Or, you know, read somebody else's if you, if you follow X, Y, and Z. Read, read what they've said about it. Take the time to ask a friend. But then reflect on yourself. And that means you've got to slow down. You can't do that if you're running frantic, frantic, and, and you lay down at night and you can't get your brain to shut off. So, you know, that's when you start thinking about, all right, what supplements maybe would help me with that? What lifestyle changes do I have to make so that I'm not running crazy all the time and why am I running crazy is it an addiction because that it can be an addiction to be addicted to running crazy um, and somebody asked me if I knew what a super sanguine was and I said uh, no I think it's called out of balance sanguine that's not a super sanguine if you're <laughs> trying to feel fill up those times so you don't have to be alone with yourself and your yes. mind, then there's some there's inner something work wrong. to do there's, some, there's something, something that's going do. on if you yeah a lot of people come and say you know, but I have all this chaos and this frustration, and so I first say, well, why? 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 Because there's a choice. Right. What What is chaotic and what is causing the frustration? If you have to mm -hmm. sit down and write it out, say this, and then what can I do to change these Sometimes things? writing it out helps so much. I'm a very Get visual. it out of here. So, yeah, and get it out of there and onto paper, and then you can so sit helpful. and sort it out and then go back to it it's later. It's so helpful with the overwhelm. You know, as a cleric, I can get... I can get overwhelmed, but I get overwhelmed in a different way than um, than a phlegmatic does or even a melancholy does. Sanguines generally, they get overwhelmed and they just decide to just think about something else instead. But like for me, if I can write it all out, then the overwhelm goes away because it's on the paper then and I can go, oh, well, I already did that and 
that's not really as important and prioritize the rest of them. But, you know, if you can't get it out of your head, then it, you're swimming in it and, and you're going to still have the crazy. And it may be something that you have no, con you feel you have yeah. no control over. An ex-husband. Yes. You know, oh, stepchildren thing, you know, mm -hmm. you know, a child with diagnosed with therapy, all, all of those things. And you can't control them, but you can control how you react to those absolutely. things. Absolutely. I've had people that have absolutely mm -hmm. just invaded my, my mental space with, with their nonsense. And so I had to step back and say, why am I giving that to them? Yeah, why are you allowing that? Right. What can I do to stop giving that to them yeah. and, and move forward? And so once I could acknowledge it and say, oh, this is what's going on. And they don't have the right to take that from me. Right. And I don't want them to have that. Well, and it, and it could be because somebody, people will say, well, but it's my mom or it's my husband or it doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. You have to like disengage from that. And that doesn't mean your marriage has to be over, but it does mean you have to do some work and figure something out. Um, hashtag thrive. Yeah. Um, you've got things that you can work on, but you have to be willing. You have to be willing to stop the, the craziness and step back and go, okay, well, I have all these resources that will help me. Yeah. What am I, what one thing am I going to start with? And, and it might just be today, I'm going to keep my phone in my pocket all day long. And I'm not going to look at it. Or I'm going to put it somewhere else, hide it, send it to work for your husband. There are a myriad of ways to communicate with one another, even if you don't have your phone. You know, tablet, the real phone, you, the one that doesn't have a picture on it. I don't own one of those anymore, but, you know, but the phone's not generally a problem for me. So if you've got a problem with those things, you got to remove the temptation and live your life and have a good day and, and, um, and, and, you know, stay off social media if that's what's tripping you up. Stay off, um, you know, stay off the things that are going to distract you and pull you away from your kids. And and work to only be on them when your kids are asleep. So it's your incentive either. to get up in the morning. Well, they, I, I have to take pictures of my kids. Yes. Put your phone in airplane mode. Some of the best days that we've had is I don't I have any pictures. It's all up here. I, I have children that are adults. That I, I don't have pictures of their every waking moment, I and they are amazing, functioning, yes. well-rounded adults. Isn't that crazy? The, the, how did they? How they did they didn't look back. That they way? have no idea what they ate for lunch. You know, twenty-five years ago, <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. It is okay. And it, like it's so okay that I have to remind myself. Oh, I should probably take a picture of that because I I I get such in the habit of living and being in that space that I'll forget to take a picture. And so this last week with Eleanor's birthday, I'm like, oh, gotta make sure I get the camera. So, so you, no, I think it's just about taking that time to really slow down. And if you can do it, and I'm not saying slow down to a halt because then you're in a phlegmatic stupor and you can't do anything. You still have to have some will to it. But, um, and I think you can be phlegmatic that doesn't do anything, but everything's going all funky, crazy, wild in your head. So you may not be doing anything because you've allowed yourself to get overwhelmed. You still have to slow down and slow down those thoughts, decide, pick one thing. Um, maybe it's that you're going to have one amazing lesson this week or two amazing lessons this week. You know, don't do, don't set yourself up to have four if you didn't have any for the last two months. Set yourself up to have one or two. Just slow down. Slow down. You do not have to have your child in every co-op, every oh my gosh, class, don't. every play date, every, don't every do everything. It. You don't, I promise. You do not. You, you really don't. And, and I'm a huge advocate of, um, of less is more, um, and of, of making decisions that work for the entire family and not just for one child. So that's why I have three kids in karate because I, because one kid in karate and uh, two other kids doing something else was, it just worked. And so, and, and I'm also a huge fan of not giving your children too many choices. And that doesn't mean you don't respect them and you don't love them. It means you do love them and you give them boundaries and you're helping form the whole family and not just center things around one child. Absolutely. And especially for those that have a special needs child, oh, you have to make sure too. that you are, the whole family isn't revolving around that child. You do. Otherwise, there's problems. Trust us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you really do have to like, because it can be really easy, really easy for everybody to Absolutely. be focusing on that one child. And then, and then everything else goes to hell in a handbasket. I've been there. Like it all starts to fall apart and you go, wait a minute, what? But I'm home all day. How is that a problem? You know, you, you gotta, you gotta really be looking. And I think one thing that um, we sort of talk about this in church 
um, family council. Having a family council meeting every week is huge. Absolutely. And it really does help you slow down. So when you're having that family council, you're going through the calendar and you're talking about what's coming up next. And, and by doing that and including your children, so even Soraya is in the family council. She might just be sitting there drawing, um, but she's there and she's listening. She knows what we're talking about and she knows that, that, that she's involved in it because she's part of the family. So I involve them from, you know, five, seven, definitely, and, and up. And we talk about the week and, and that really gets us all slowing down and all communicating because if dad knows that you have four appointments this week. Why did you do that to yourself? Don't do that to yourself. But if dad knows, then he knows, you know, I'm going to cut her some slack. Maybe I should say, hey, could I cook dinner for you two nights this week? Right. And older kids can help if people Absolutely. don't realize that. Get your kids helping. And they like to help. One of the big things that we do to include everybody is meals, and we see this a lot. And especially with little, well, my one, they won't eat. Well, did you ask them what they wanted? Everybody at our house gets to pick a dinner. Oh, that's great. So they get input. So I have kids that... I have older girls that have to be, you know, this place mm -hmm. and, and the other, and so that's on the calendar, and I have a 15-year-old son that only cares if we're going to have sloppy joes one night. Like, that's his big so he went, thing. So he's making them? them? And he make, yeah. He'll make them. Absolutely. I, at eight, Paige can cook a full meal. She just turned 11. Mm -hmm. um, I have a 10-year-old that can do all his own laundry from sorting yep. it to washing it, driving it. Same here. And, and not, he's 10, but we got him at two. He has fetal alcohol syndrome, so mentally he, on a good day, is five. So these kids can help, and they like to help. Okay. The pride he has when he helps Absolutely. in the family. But they like that input. They like to say, well, I want to have spaghetti on you know, Tuesday. They or do. I want to have you know, this. They, and they feel like they're getting an input, and the family mm -hmm. runs as a team. And it's it not, is. you know, well, mom says that we have to eat this. And, right, because often know, we do our menu for the next week when we do our family, our, our weekly plan, like together. Right. You know, because we do the same, same sort of idea, that I want input. And, and mostly because I want y'all to help me make it. So. Right, and you don't want to make food and then they all stare at it. No. And everybody's crying at bed because they wanted Because they're hungry and they wanted something or, else. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I So agree. nobody can say, well, I didn't want that. I, well, we all we talked all about, it about it and it. we all agreed on it. You so had your chance to veto it. it. Get over it. Get <laughs> right. your food. Yeah. The little ones can cut vegetables. They can bring they them can. in and have them be part of that. They can. And, and, you know, I'm also a huge fan of not making 14 meals. So, you know, I I've will always that. have, I, I have too, I totally have. My grandmother asked me if I was a short order cook. I know, I, like, I felt like huh. that before, and I'll see now, the kitchen is closed. Yeah, I had to be called Get out. Get over it, the kitchen is closed. Because <laughs> it didn't occur to me, I was, I, I was a tactical there. parent, I, I was told, feeding on my kids. Yes, <laughs> I was, I've it's totally so been there as well, and I think that really it's about um, realizing that, you know, you can make, like, okay, so, so say you have one child that's gluten-free or one child that won't eat bread, but they'll eat tortillas. That's not what, I, that don't mean that's not the whole meal. I'm talking about you make one meal for everybody and a little unique snowflake over here. I have a child with celiac. I have a child that they with vegetarian. Need a whole meal that's just their own. So I make, we make, we decide on one thing and then if we need a gluten-free yeah, Then you adjust it. Yeah, then I adjust it, but it's still the same meal. Yeah. It I, is. I no longer make five My short order meals over there. So you, you should take it from two moms who have been around the block. Stop it. But then bring Stop them into it. the kitchen. It's so much easier to hold the space when they're standing yes. next to you cutting up a carrot, mm -hmm. even if the carrot falls on the floor and the dog eats it. Yeah, absolutely. My dogs carrots. But You've got weird dogs, Kim. I have a lot of dogs, too. But you know, Eric used to have a cat that ate cantaloupe, so that's a weirdness. Animals yeah. don't eat fruits and vegetables. I, my dogs will eat anything. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's great, and it's very clean for them, so it's something yeah. out with the floor, but... You know, if you're in the kitchen and you're checking out and you're making dinner and you're like, oh, I'm just tired. I'm just counting down to bedtime. I get it. Oh, you know, yeah. I totally we, we get, get it. it. We get it. But it's We've actually there. gotten it this week. Oh, We've yeah. been together. Like, what time is it? Yeah. Time? Like, what time? <laughs> yeah. We have children that love each other, but that are, their energy combined Ooh. is like a super force. Paige and Soraya are hilarious and fun. They are. <laughs> and poor Sam is. He's Sam's, just, Yeah. He's like, I love you both. Can I, I go to bed now? Yeah. Can I please go watch something by myself? Yeah. <laughs> a little they have a lot of fun, though. They have but a lot if of fun. you hold the space and include them, because if yeah. I have to stop what I'm doing because they're beating the crap out of each other in the Absolutely. other room or mm -hmm. doing whatever, 
that creates chaos for everybody. It does. And we're back to chaos because then I'm angry and they're crying or upset or whatever's right. going on and then dinner's late and then just, it's a cycle of Well, and chaos. it just keeps, it's like a snowball. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Right. So no, I usually bring like, especially if there's one child that I know doesn't mix with another child, I will say, you know, or a child that's had a hard time all day, come and stand next to me. I might not want to stand next to them, but I make them stand next <laughs> to me anyway. Sometimes it's just not fun. It's not fun for me. But I'm. guess what? I signed up for this. I'm the mom. And I'm an agent. I'm not an object. This is, what I, this is what I choose to do. So that's what you have to remind yourself. I chose this. And, and even when you feel like crap and they're being naughty um, or you've just had a hard, long day, you still chose it. You're tired and you burn out. You're, I've been a single mom. I've been oh, a working mom. Yep. I've been a... Same here. So... And I know there's you pick them up from daycare and you come home and you're like I love you and I'm excited to see your face but I really want to see it sleeping. Yeah. But you have to check in and then after bedtime then you can then you can leave, check out then you can check back yeah. out. But the longer they see and they know when you check out you're not fooling anybody. Oh yeah. I promise. Know. I used to think they didn't know. <laughs> they know. They know. And sometimes they do things like check out and they're like, oh mom's checked out, so I think I'm gonna go check out. And and that's they don't do it so much when they're little, but man. They can sure do it when they're teenagers. If you yeah. want to, like, completely cut off connection with your teenagers, just get out your phone. Mm -hmm. And then just see what happens. Then they get off their phone. So I think I think that's pretty much it anyway. Yeah. But yeah. with teenagers, you have to check in. Yeah. I, I have a lot of people that come to me and say, why are you so close with your adult kids? Oh, and because you check in with them. And why are you so close? And, and it's it's respect because I, I've checked mm -hmm. in. I've engaged with them. I they tell me things that I do not want to hear. I know. Oh, geez, I don't want to hear them. We've or heard we've heard conversations from some teenage girls that we don't want to hear. <laughs> but but we we engage and, and we listen and mm -hmm. and we laugh and pray and pray. <laughs> lots of lots of prayer. Yes, lots of prayer. But I, I really like him. But they appreciate it. I have a I do. you know at least sixteen now, and Emily's going to yep. be seventeen this week, and they are affectionate and they are not the. Oh, get away from me. That's they aren't. Like and, and you know, I really worried. When Ellie was 13, I really didn't like her. And I tell people that a lot. She was not my friend. I did not like her at all. I, I remember thinking, this is going to be really long until she becomes an adult. I, I was really worried. Really worried. And I spent a lot of time on my knees about that. And got a lot of, like, just, just love her. Stop trying to chase her when she's been ornery. Just love her. And... Now, so we had three days of celebration for her birthday, and I, that might be a little bit excessive, but we had a good time, and she's a really good kid, and she's had some struggles in her life, and so it meant a lot to me to be able to do something big for her, and and she, I wouldn't have done it if she wasn't an awesome kid, if she was kind of just lukewarm, I would have been like, eh, one day's enough, but, but you know, she, every time something new, because there was a lot of surprises for her this week. She just threw her arms around me and, and just and whispered in my ear about how much she loved me. And, and that doesn't come from me not working. You know, we've had to really work to have that relationship. Just like any relationship. you got to work on a marriage. you got to work on your relationship right. with your kids. You can't just... It's not luck. We can, no. Oh, you're lucky you and your husband get along. We've not, not always been in that place. It's not Melissa luck. will tell you. No. Me and my husband have not always been in that place. That's right. And, That's so, and we are. But we work but for it. But you worked for it. We really so we it. made sacrifices and we worked for it. We fought for our marriage. Yes. So that and that's different than fighting in your marriage. Absolutely. Way different. So, anyways, so check back in. Check in. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. What can you What can you get rid of off your calendar, off mm -hmm. your plate? Is it what? When you wake up and you think, "Oh, I have to do that." Is it meals? Prep. You know, meal prep. Yeah, meal prep. Week. You know, I would love a, a personal chef. I've thought about that so many times, like in just the last week, but it's not happening. <laughs> but it's and I don't have a budget to go out every day. So, you know, we have to cook, And but you can ask for help. I mean, I think that it is perfectly reasonable in today's day and age, with especially with all of the things that you're doing for your children, for you to be able to ask your husband, could you just take one day off my plate, please, just one? Absolutely. If I have it all ready for you, would you just cook it? Or buy yourself an Instant Pot. Holy cow, that thing is amazing. Or you know what? Throw everything in there. You know we've had cereal for dinner. Do you know, and three years ago person. somebody said, Kelly, give them cereal for dinner. And I was mortified. The thought of feeding my children cereal for dinner made me feel like I was the worst mom ever. 
and now I'm totally over that. And it's okay to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and they can make it yeah. themselves. But my three-year-old nephew can make a peanut butter mm -hmm. and jelly sandwich. That's why I'm so it's okay to be like, today's busy, and I'm not feeling it. So it's I'm gonna totally check in, okay. And I'm gonna do a lesson. Huh. Or I'm gonna, you know, model, or I'm gonna paint, or I'm gonna do something. And we're gonna have a bowl of cereal for dinner. Yes. Or we're gonna have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or we're yep. gonna have crackers and cheese and fruit. Yep. So yep. it doesn't need to be these meals. All of those things. So you moms know who you are that are, yes, that are trying stressing, to make you're stressing about beautiful it. meals and all that. They don't. They just want to be with you. They do. They just want to be with you. And it and it's um, you know you can make really good healthy fast meals too. It doesn't always have to be. We have know, smoothies for dinner. We have two. Gosh, I swear she got me twice. <laughs> it's food. It's just it is. They're they're getting nourished or. Um, yeah, so I'll be like, can I have a hot dog? You know, I only do the good ones, but I'm like, I don't have any buns. But I don't care. She didn't care. All right, boil and a pop. Bye. There you go. You know, it's not a big deal. So you, you have to sort of, you have to pick the thing that, um, that stresses you out the most and take that off your pile and figure out how to de-stress that so that you can then, you know, work on the, the other things that are really important. And, and food is a big deal. I get it. You know, I know a lot of families that have a lot of dietary issues. But there are definitely ways to cut corners. Absolutely. You've got to figure those things out. Buy pre-cut vegetables. I know it might cost 30 cents more, but, you know, time is money. And, and, and I didn't understand that for a lot of years. For a lot of years when I lived in Lack, I was like, what? Time is money? No, it's not. I'm just going to chop up five pounds of celery. But if I can buy it already cut, dang, yeah, I'm going to do that. And so, so think about things that you can do to sort of reduce that because time is money. Even if you're not being paid for what you're doing by the hour. It, it's, it's an emotional currency. It's it's stuff that, that you don't have to worry about. So figure those things out. Figure out things that you can do to sort of cut back. And um, and you don't have to be, just because you're a Waldorf parent, you don't have to make bread every week. You can. It's great. You don't have to make your own butter all the time. You can. It's great. I've been there. I, you know, do that. But there are definitely times where I'm like, thank goodness there's some Kerrygold in my fridge. That I didn't have to make. That I didn't have to, yep. Yeah. So so just, you know, slow down. Stop with the guilt. Stop with the guilt. The guilt has to stop. Mm -hmm. And slow down. And and enjoy it. And have fun. Because, you know, that's what this is about. Why, why are you doing it? If you're not having a good time, ask yourself, why am I doing this? <laughs> really. Because we have a good time. Oh, you, I know you have a good time. If we weren't having a good time, <laughs> we would not be here. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So anyway, very good. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Kelly. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.